Welcome to Bite Size Green, where a healthy body, a healthy planet, and delicious food are all on the same menu. I'm your host, Angelina Legris, and today we have beekeeper Wayne Pitts of the UVS Gold Apiary from Gilroy joining us. Wayne's going to talk to us about the fascinating world of bees, and he's going to tell us why it's important to buy local honey. Then he'll share with us a salmon with honey teriyaki glaze one of his favorite recipes. And finally, we'll talk about what we can do to help the bees and how you can learn beekeeping yourself. Thanks for joining us, Wayne. You're welcome. Tell us, you've been a beekeeper for 12 years. Yes. How'd you get started? Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, years ago, um, my father-in-law was a beekeeper, but he was getting elderly when I met him. And um, he was getting out of it. And uh, Then I almost got involved in bees, and my company moved me back to California from Virginia, so I dropped the idea because I didn't want to haul 10 hives of bees across the country. <laughs> and then a few years later, I got interested again, and I checked the book out of the library and read it, and it was about bee diseases. And I went, oh my goodness, this is just too much work. And then about five years later, I bought some property west of Morgan Hill, and now I have a, a place to keep them. And at the same time, the Gilroy Beekeepers Association got fired up, and I started going to the meetings at the second meeting, like the third or fourth meeting, they made me president, and I've been president ever since. So that's how I got into beekeeping, and a friend of mine uh, that I met at the Gilroy Beekeepers gave me two swarms to get me started with. And uh, so the first summer I had two swarms that turned into bees, and they're out there, you know, and the problem with beginning beekeepers is you have to look at the bees every day. Yeah. <laughs> and then Labor Day came, so it's time to harvest the honey. And I was trying to figure out how to do this because I'm out in the wilds of the, the, the hills west of Morgan Hill and it's dry as a tinderbox and I don't want to fire the smoker up because I might start a fire. Okay. So I'd read where you could use a leaf blower to blow the bees out of the hive. So I threw the wife and the, and the youngest child in the truck and put my generator in the back and my leaf blower and we went up to the top of the hill and I fired up the generator, ran the extension cord down, hooked up the leaf blower, turned the hive on its side pulled the own button on the leaf blower and the generator went Oh no. <laughs> now there's this cartoon of bees in the air. My wife and child ran and jumped in the truck. Oh my goodness. And I had a, a veil on so then I got the honey out. Managed to get 32 stings in the process because they got it under the veil. Oh no. You know, it's hard to get your contacts out when your eyes are swollen shut. I'm glad you survived that episode and it sounded like, sounds like the passion survived that. Yes it did. <laughs> the honey was so good. And you might have turned into a, a bee, too, it looks like, with your hat. Just barely. <laughs> Most people's experience with honeybees is that there's a swarm comes, and what they see is this big cloud of bees. And it's really noisy because they're flying through the air. And, of course, that makes noise when they fly through the air. Right. And because people are not familiar with bees or are not used to seeing bees around, it kind of scares them. But I compare it to a five-year-old soccer game. You got this ball, and you got all these players running after the ball, and that's the queen. The queen's going in a straight line, and the bees are following her. It's so her entourage. Right. <laughs> and they will, she will get tired, but she doesn't fly very much. And she'll land on a tree, and all the bees will cluster around her. And they'll be hanging there. And if you think about it, only the bees that are attached to the limb are attached to the limb. All the rest of the bees are hanging off of those bees. Okay. And there's about three to five pounds of bees here. So you just go up to the tree limb and set a box underneath and give it a sharp shake like that, they fall in the box. And when I show that up, easily. people yes, people ask me, aren't you going to put a suit on? The thing about swarms is before they left the hive, they knew that it was going to be maybe a week before they'd eat again. Okay. So they fill themselves up with honey. And how are people after Thanksgiving? Pretty they lethargic. Want, yeah, they want to sleep, right? So the bees are not really ready to bother anyone. They're there. They're waiting, they have no brood, which are the babies to protect. They're just there. So I don't wear a suit when I go collect bees from a swarm because one, I want to let people know that these are not dangerous. People come in two flavors, they're hiding behind the uh, window looking out or they're right at my elbow. <laughs> the ones right at my elbow, I ask to stand a few feet away <laughs> because you never know if a hive is actually gonna behave itself or you're gonna run across that one in a hundred that is not very happy with you. Okay. And which happens about every three or four years, I'll have one hive and just break. <laughs> but the rest of them, they fall in the box. And we'll talk more about the Nassanoff gland and how the bees march into the box and things later. Okay. And so this is what a swarm looks like in nature. If you, so if you see something like this, what you do is, at the end of the show, we'll give you the URLs for the local bee associations. You call them and someone will come out and retrieve these bees for you. All right, this is a picture of a drone. 
And we show him first because there's a, about 5% of the bees in a hive are drones. They're the males that mate with the females. And the thing about this, you notice how large his wings are and how big his eyes are because bees, drones, and queens mate about 100 feet off the ground. And the drone has to be able to see this little tiny bug flying around to mate with her. And then once he mates with her, he dies. And she'll mate up with up to 13 to 50 drones. The average is about 20. Contrast that with a queen. This is the queen. And what I want to show you here is the size of the worker bee. This is a worker, and this is a queen. And I'm going to use my fingers to gaze this. And I move over to here, and you can see that the queen's about one-third bigger than a worker bee. All of this apparatus, the abdomen here, is full of ovioles, which are uh, egg-laying machines. She lays an egg a minute during the summer. That's amazing. 1,500 a day. This is a picture of the queen's court, which is all the worker bees surrounding the queen. And what we have here is, you notice, by the way, these are the bees' noses. We have the bees touching the queen. Queens and bees have pheromones that they communicate with. The pheromones are, that's a 50 cent word for smells. <laughs> they use these pheromones. The queen has 10 that's unique to her, and then they share the other 30. And what happens here is, you notice how this bee is touching the queen and this bee is touching the queen. These bees will only stay there for about a minute and then they'll move away. And then another bee will touch this bee and find out, yes, there's queen pheromone there. So in a space of 24 hours, every one of the 50,000 bees in the hive know the queen is healthy. If the queen dies within 24 hours, all the bees know the queen's not there anymore. And the, this bit queen is special. You see how the wing is clipped right here mm -hmm. and there's a color there? This is called a breeder queen. We have... Uh, and that's painted on. That's that, not a natural... That's color. right. Um, to control the type of genetics you have, you artificially inseminate queens. A drone is a haploid insect. It means it only has one parent. Okay. It's an exact genetic copy of its mother. A fertilized egg becomes a diploid, which is a female, and any egg laid that's been fertilized may become a queen. Let's take a look how we make queens. Okay. okay. This is a larvae that's about six days old. And you notice this white stuff up here? That's called royal jelly. If you take an egg, let it hatch, and you feed it only royal jelly, within 14 days later you have a queen. So what happens here is, if it's fed only royal jelly, it matures and becomes a queen. If it's fed a mixture of royal jelly and bee bread, it becomes a regular worker. So diet is the only thing that's different between a queen and a regular bee. That's amazing. Yes. And are these bees making honey or? They're swapping spit. Okay. <laughs> and what it is is in a beehive you have the workers and they go out and gather the nectar and they bring it back to the hive. And that jar of honey over there is one pound of honey. It took a million trips to make that pound of honey. Wow. Now honey and nectar, I use those two words interchangeably. And what happens here is the nectar is mixed with an enzyme in the bee's honey stomach, which is the place where they store the nectar they bring back from the flowers. And that enzyme helps make it into honey. And what helps that is the fact that the worker bee comes in, the forager, and he lands at the entrance to the hive, or she lands at the entrance to the hive, and doesn't work her way through the hive. She hands it off to another bee, and that's what that picture was showing us. The 50 cent word is trophallaxis. Okay. You can see the nectar in the cells down here where the, the bees are depositing it. And think about it, it's very, very small amount, but over a million trips we can get a pound of it. And a bee weighs about the same as an M&M. Okay. However, when they're full of nectar, they weigh the same as two M&Ms. So they can okay. carry their own weight. Now bees, anybody here an aerospace engineer? Not bees me. Can't, <laughs> bees can't fly. I mean, if you look at the physics of it, they can't fly. Okay. And the way they do that is they have four wings when they're sitting still, which it, if we pop this pop, puppy up here, you can see there's a wing here and a wing here. When they're flying, they only have two. Bees okay. invented Velcro. Okay. <laughs> there is a hook on the forewing, and there's a loop on the trailing wing, and when they take off, they hook the two together, and now they have two wings. Okay. They don't flap them like birds. They rotate them like helicopter blades. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's how bees can fly, and they can hover, and they can back up, and then go forward, and then go up, and then go down. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get it, get it.